Hello, and welcome to the video for Playing with Stuff. Playing with the NVIDIA Soul Remix characters working in Sequencer. Now that we have a character with animations that we could drive manually around our scene, we're going to show how to create a sequence or an animation, an animatic, a video playback, basically. Well, it's video inside the engine. We're going to make our character move from one point to another. We're going to use some cameras to show some little camera transitions. We're going to put in special effects to show an effect. We're going to add sounds and music, and we're going to have this all play back as a pre-recorded sequence. So then we can then export it out as a video. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. So we're going to need a sequence. So let's start with that. So cinematics at the top, add a level sequence. And we'll go ahead and just call it new level sequence because I'm lazy. Now, the level sequence has stuff added to it. If you haven't used it before, of course, refer to the documentation. We're just going to do a brief overview on it. But you basically have a camera track, and you have different cameras that view stuff. And then you can add any other thing to the track, like an actor moving or sound effect playing or part of effect starting, and it will key them up in terms of time. Well, we need a camera first off, so let's start with that. Now you have some default cameras in the engine. So if we typed in camera, we're going to get our camera. And of course we could use that. However, I'd like to use the cinematic camera because the cinematic camera allows us to focus and zoom and do really cool stuff. So we'll grab a cinematic camera. We'll pull it into our scene. Now for this one, we're not going to duplicate my example. We're just going to show the character here. And then we'll have the character start walking to here and looking at this. Then it'll catch on fire. So we'll have a camera set up here looking at the character. Then we're going to switch to another camera set up here. Or, I don't know, we'll have another camera set up. Maybe, maybe we'll have the camera set, well, we have the camera set up to here. And then we'll watch it pan over to here. And then we'll zoom in maybe to here, to a third camera while everything sets on fire. So we're going to go with three cameras. So we're going to take our first camera. And setting it up couldn't be easier. Right click on your camera and tell it to pilot. Once we pilot, we can go to wherever we want our camera to be and lock it into place. So in this case, I'm going to start it right here with a fixed shot. We're going to focus on our character. So let's eject out of here. And there's our camera ready to go. Looking at our camera settings, we have a really cool feature called Look At. You enable Look At Tracking. Then you find our actor to track. In this case, it's going to be our sole character. So this is where it's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. Because technically, if we do this, and we enable look at tracking on our player start, it's not really going to give us the desired results. So we're going to want to replace our player start with our fixed character that we're going to move through the scene. Since we're not going to be playing with this character, this is going to give us the desired result. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's find our player start. Delete it. Yes, I know it's connected. We're going to get rid of it. Find our female. Drag her blueprint into here. Drop her, whoops, I deleted her. That was awesome. Drop her to the ground with the N key. Rotate her so she's going to be, well, actually, what's cool about this? Right click, pilot. <laughs> let's pilot her. Okay, let's not do that. I hit collision a bunch of times. Let's unpilot her. That was not working out well. We'll move her a little bit over like that. And we'll move her to here. Maybe rotate a little more. What do we think? Right about there. Okay, so that's where she's going to start. That's where her character is going to start. And let's drag her. Well, let's drag her up a little bit. Yeah, right about. Okay, so that should work. So there's our character in our scene, ready to go. We'll go back to our camera. We'll change its look at focus back to the sole character. And there we go. This is what our camera is seeing. That's what it's going to start off with. Now I have a ton of options in here. So for example, we can offset what it's looking at. We can show the debug. So here's the debug look at. And you notice it's looking at her torso. But if we adjust the Z, I can actually have it looking at her head. So let's let's see. X maybe. Go back. So now the camera is going to focus on her head whenever it's tracking. So we're going to keep more of a top shot. So that's where there. You can adjust zoom and depth of focus. There's tons of options here. We're going to leave these all like this because this is what we want. So now if this character was to move, our camera would follow it. We're going to use that for a second camera. But as it starts now, if we hit play, well, we get another character in our scene that we can control and nothing's really happening. 
So let's grab this character. And we're going to switch her to auto possess, which is down here somewhere. Or you could type in possess, which is probably easier. Or I just find it. It's going to make, there we go. Auto possess player, player zero. Now when we hit play, it's going to possess this player. Now we can move them around, which is fine. We're not going to do that. We're just going to keep it like this for now. Um, because we're going to switch over to our cinematic camera setup. So here's our level sequence. And here's our camera. We need our camera in our level sequence. Going to our sequencer, which I've docked by default, it might show up here. I've docked it down here. This is all of our stuff. We're going to want to add our camera. So track, actor to sequence, by default, whatever I've targeted is here, or you can search for it, add cinematic camera actor one. So that's our first camera. Here's our camera cut track. This is going to be show all of our different camera sequences. So as we go from one camera to another, they're going to show up here. And this is our camera settings. This is going to be a fixed shot for a fixed amount of time. So if we hit play, we'd want it to play back now. However, by default, it's not going to do that. So let's choose our level sequence and let's tell it to auto start. So let's find that option, auto play, hit play, hit play. There we go. For this duration right here, it's going to show this camera and then of course going to switch back to our game because that's our game camera. It's a good start. We have this going. We have this going. We're going to have our character walk. And when they start walking, we're going to switch cameras. So there's two things to accomplish. Switching a camera and then getting our character to walk. Switching our camera is easy. We've already shown how to add one camera. So let's just add another camera. And switching cameras is accomplished with our little camera cut track. So let's take and let's add in another camera. I'm going to go with, what do we think? Right about here here yeah we'll go with right about here here's our cine camera actor let's drag it into our scene and we're going to move it over towards me we're going to pilot it and we're going to go with right about here you know you'll notice because of the type of camera we have here we have our different look so like for example it zooms out with a 12 millimeter 30 millimeter etc etc i'm gonna go back to what we had before universal zoom uh you know what you know what i can like the 30 let's keep it at the 30 ca 30 millimeter camera right here we still want to track an actor so enable lookout tracking find our soul character and there we go now we're focusing our soul character right there unfortunately we're not going to focus on their face because again offset we still have this old one debugging so let's find, oh, that's our character. Okay. Now this is a mistake I make often. So try to learn from my mistake. We are piloting a camera right now. It would be smart to eject from the camera before you start going around the world or you're going to end up moving your cameras. I've done that many, many times and it's super annoying. I'm going to disable debug. We're going to go back to our other camera. We're going to enable debug. And I'm, again, I'm going to want to focus this on the player's head. Uh, so let's move it up. Whoops. Uh, what did we had about 50 last time? And then move forward about 10 on the X. Uh, we'll go about 15. There we go. Now it's going to focus on the head of the character. Yeah, maybe a zoomed in shot would be better right here. What if we go with like 50? There we go. Let's go 50 millimeter. It gives us a much tighter focus as you can see here. Cool. We don't have it on here, so what do we do? Let's collapse our first camera. Actor to track. We have our second camera right here, which is actually camera three, so I'm gonna rename that to two because it should be in order. Add, actor, camera two. Now we have camera two being tracked. But you'll notice we don't have the actual camera showing up anywhere else. We need to take our first one and we'll make it smaller. And then we need to add another camera cut up here. So add camera, two. So now we have one and two here. And you'll notice they're going to share. And we're going to be able to go back and forth. So camera one and camera two. For a quick rundown of sequencer, the top bar here is our scrub bar. How much time we're going through. Right now we're at 30 frames per second. So every 30 is one second. One, two, three, four. We have five seconds of video here. This top one and left one, a green is start, red is end. Let's extend this out. So now our sequence is going to play for longer. 
and then we can move our little camera shots and you notice they're going to auto fill in so if we make our first camera shorter we're not going to have a gap and we're going to have our second one fill in if we make our second one to the right our first one's going to fill in so let's make our first camera shot about three seconds long and then we'll switch over to our second camera shot and if we hit play after three seconds it should switch over to our second camera there we go so we're doing good so far and that'll play out of course till there and then switch back to our game now that we have our second camera set up let's make our character move there's a couple ways of doing this we could add let's for example grab our character add actor to sequencer add them to our sequencer we could add a transform track so this is where their character's at in the world and then we could keyframe them from one place to another which would work the second one is we can use a AI move to so we could put a navigation mesh mesh in the world and we could tell our character using events to move from one place to another now the transform track would probably work very simply for this one because we're only gonna have our character go from one spot to the other but in my example I had to move around obstacles and move to other places so I use the AI and we're going to use that simply so I can show you how the events track work. So that's the other reason. So we'll delete that character and we're going to make a blueprint to manage moving our character for moving events. We don't have to use a blueprint to do this. However, using a blueprint to do this gives us an advantage, which I'll show you here shortly. So let's make a new blueprint actor. And we're going to call this a blueprint director because he's going to direct things. And let's put him in the world. He needs to be an actor so he's in the world and being in the world is going to allow us to actually manually place where the character moves let's pull him up now the goal of this will be simply to hold data and to tell things what to do now by holding data we're going to hold points in our world we're going to say hey i want the character to move from here to here to here to here to here and i want to visually represent that with little icons in the world we're going to use little target points so let's add a variable. We're going to add a um, move to locations is what we're going to call it. Well, let's call it locations. We're going to click on here and change this to an actor. So we want the actor object type because we're going to want to put stuff that's already in the world. And then we're going to right click on our little variable type here to change this to an array. You can also go over here and click on this and change it to an array from the drop down. An array will give us a group or more than one item we can then play with in the world. We're also going to click the little eyeball here to make it editable. So what that did is now that we have this in the world, we have our little array of move to locations. And we can make move to locations. And we can select any actor in the world. I'm going to grab some targets. So here's a target point and just plop a target point into the world. And we'll move our target point to let's say right here. Now we can easily name this. So I'm going to change this to target point one, TP1. Now I have a physical target point in the world that I'm going to use. Go back to our director, our blueprint director, and tell it I want TP1 as my move to location. We don't need two of them. We're just going to use one. So then there we go. Now this item, our director, knows about this target point in the world, and it can tell our player to move there. And we can easily test that. We'll just make an event when this starts to do that. So we do move to location or actor. Uh, simple move to location is what we want. Oh, dang it. Uh, simple move to actor. That's what I want because we're putting in an actor. Okay. Who do we want to move? Whoops. Remember, we are controlling this player. So we get the player's controller. And where do we want him to move to? Well, this is going to be our first point. So we grab our array, we use git to get a copy of what's in there, we get the first value, arrays are zero based, so our first one, if we look here, is zero, that's our first movement point, and then we feed that into our goal. That's it, it's as simple as that. Now if we were to hit play, nothing's going to happen, because there is no navigation mesh. We don't have any way for this player to know how to get to this point. So we go to volumes, we find our navigation mesh bounds, and we drop it into our world. I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to zero so it's in the middle of our level, which technically isn't apparently. Move it over here, and then we need to resize it. 
So something like 50 by 50 by 50. I don't know. Let's see. Is that big enough? I think it is. Yeah, that looks like it covers our level. How do we know it's going to work and cover our level? We hit the P key. P for Paul. And this tells us our navigation mesh. Everywhere our character can walk is going to be covered in green. Now we're doing something really simple here. We're just simply moving our character from here to here. We have a walkway that we can see. And we're not worried about them going to other places. We're not making a game. We're not making this giant, enormous project where our players can do the wackiest things. We're making a video. We're taking shortcuts. It's movie magic. We're just going to make it work. If we hit play right now, you'll notice our player runs. And we're done. Now it was a little fast. And it happened immediately. So we would want to introduce a delay. We'd want it to happen at a certain time. And then we want it to slow down our character. Let's do the last thing first. Let's slow down our character. So grab our character. Find the max walk speed. So we'll type in walk. It's not going to be under the character blueprint. It's going to be under the movement. Max walk speed. And let's set this to something like 100. We'll test this. And there's our character walking. Again, it looks a little weird because we're using stuff that wasn't designed for this thing. And we're not artists. Our point is just to get something working. We can adjust things later as needed. But that seemed like it wasn't too bad. The walk speed. You notice the camera changed. The camera focuses. So everything's coming together. The next thing is going to be we don't want it to happen immediately. So, well, it does that because of the begin play. Let's make a custom event. And we'll call this one go to one. Whenever we say go to one, the character will go to one. And, of course, we could have go to two and have it simply get a different value from here. We can do whatever we want. But the point is, go to one is called, we go to one. Simple as that. So how do we make our sequence call that event? Well, we can add an event track. So you can add an event track in here, and this will trigger stuff on our timeline. However, it doesn't specifically have anything it can specifically target. It just calls generic events. So if we go to section, trigger, we're going to get a trigger section. We move our little thingy to wherever we want. Let's say we want it to happen after one second. We move to 30. We can add a new keyframe here or hit enter. And you notice we get a new keyframe. If we right click, go to properties. We have event. These are events for our sequencer. Create a new endpoint because we don't have one or select an existing one if we did. We'll create a new endpoint. You'll notice it comes into here and says, hey, we're inside of our sequence director. Here's an event called event zero, and you can do stuff in here. You'll notice it tells you things like blah, 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 no parameters, binding, things like that. I'll cover that in a second. But basically, this is when we could do stuff. So we could, for example, get the player controller, and we could move to actor location, and we could do this. But now we run to this problem. Where's our goal? How do we reference this goal? This sequencer is inside of the world, but how do we connect this sequencer to our goal? And that's what our director is for. Our director is our handoff. Our director handles everything. Our sequencer is simply going to say, hey, director, do something. So let's go ahead and get rid of this event and save that out. We'll go back to here. And we're going to delete our generic event track. And we're going to make a specific event track. We'll grab our director and we'll add our director to our sequencer. And then in this there, we'll add an event track to our director. Now this all seems the same, except you're going to see one small difference. So here's our event trigger. Let's go two seconds in. Two seconds. Can you mind? There we go. Add an event. You'll notice this says nothing. It's like, ah, you have no event. Again, right click. Unbound. Now, this is cool because we have an extra option called a quick binding. Quick bindings are because we have an item, the director, and so we can access any of the stuff on this director. So we can do things like moving and setting and getting all directly from the event track. Or create a new endpoint, and you'll notice we now have a target input. And look what it is. It's our director. So all we have to do now is go to one, off of our target, 
And this is going to say, let's rename this also. Go to one. And this is going to say when this event is run on our sequencer, grab the director, which is what we're attached to right here, and tell it to go to one. I also don't like this go away. Oh, I hate this giant thing. There we go. And it's going to say BP director, call your go to one event. That's it. So now if we hit play, two seconds, we call go to one, and our character moves. Okay, things aren't quite matching up, but wow, this is really easy. Here's our event at two seconds. Grab our camera. Boop. Slap it back to two seconds. Hit play. Whoops. This is also a weird bug. If you have your sequencer thingy and stuff starts happening too soon, just grab your timeline, drag it back, and then let it play normally. But you notice now... After our two seconds starts, we get our event firing off, and we get our camera to change. We'll move our character over to there. This one's still not going as much as possible. Maybe maybe we'll move our character faster. So again, this is all just playing with stuff. We'll go to our blueprint. We'll find, oops, we're running, so we can't want that. We'll find our walk speed again. Let's set it to 150 this time. Let's see how that looks. Wait two seconds. Character starts walking. They should walk a little faster. Doesn't seem like it, but again, it's only 150 speed. They're still not quite where we want it. We can either... Oops. Also, I changed the mass instead of the walk speed. So let's... Duh. Walk speed. Let's try that again. Okay. There we go. A little bit faster. We're just... Again, we're playing with this. I'm trying to get our character right around to there. Good. And then we'll switch to a third camera once they stop. And then we'll go ahead and we'll fire off some things like some fire effects and sequence uh, particle effects and things like that. So hopefully at this point in time, we are now 22 minutes into the video. You've got the basics. So I'm going to quickly go over the next parts as we do some things. I'm going to slap a third camera in there. We're going to set up a few more events. And then we're going to work on doing our last parts, which is bringing in some things from an external program and then recording things out for our sequence and then adjusting them. So using our third party tools. And let's set up our last camera and then we'll work on the next stuff. So here is a camera. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our camera because I like it, it's already set up for our character. So we're going to duplicate. And now we have our camera three. We're gonna drag our camera three to a new position. Now you'll notice one annoyance because we have it set to enable lock look at tracking. It's going to stay facing our character. So we'll disable that temporarily. We will pilot. We're going to end up with this one. Oh, what do we want? Somewhere right around here. Whoops. Oh, I have flipped my camera completely. That's awesome. Okay. Let's reset that because that flipped our camera completely. Try that again. And we'll do something like this. We're going to go ahead and eject, change that back to enable look at tracking, add our third camera again to our sequencer. So at this point in time, you'll notice I've added these two camera actors to here. This time we're just going to add a camera cut. We're going to go to here. We're going to go to the end point. I want to say right around here because it was a little bit long. Add camera, new binding. It's going to select camera three. You notice camera three adds in over here. And you notice camera three adds in over here automatically. So that's two different ways to add things in. We'll quickly check this out. Character should wait. Character should walk. They should get to the end. We should switch to our camera three, which is in a different position. And then we're going to cue some fire effects and things like that in our next video. And then we'll fade out and we are done.